and we're recording. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Let me just share my screen real quick. Okay, so I hope that means everyone can see this. Um, so hello, everyone. I'm Erica Esquivel. I am one of the librarians at the SDSU library, and I'm part of the research instruction and outreach unit in the library. Um, I am currently here to present to you guys uh, from San Diego. Um, is that our is everyone near San Diego or like in San Diego? You guys can like give me a thumbs up if you're near campus or a thumbs down if you're not near campus. It looks kind of a mix. Um, okay, so I'll touch on some things that might apply to some of you guys and some things that won't apply to you. Because um, right now, even though the library is closed, there are things that we're offering uh, for those of you who are um, close to campus. Okay, um, so going on. So just to give you guys what I'm going to be talking about, I'm just going to show you guys how to use the library online and I'll talk to you guys a little bit about the types of resources that we have at the library and how you can access it access them. And then a little bit on the different types of support that you guys might need um, either in this class with your writing or if you guys are STEM majors, we do have a math and stats learning center. So uh, I'll show you guys where you guys can get help with that. Um, so yeah, so has anyone ever used the website before? Some yes, some no. Okay. So uh, it, it seems kind of really basic, but I always think that, especially when you're gonna do research, it's, it's really good for you to get familiar with how the website works before you actually start thinking about how you're gonna start doing your research. Um, but why would you wanna use the library in the first place? Um, you can think of us as your support system the entire time that you are a student. Uh, we are made up of two buildings. Has anyone actually been to campus or are a lot of you guys first years or no? It's a mix. Okay, so when you guys are actually able to go on campus, um, the library is actually broken up into two buildings. So it's these two that are here in this picture. This back one is the original library building that was built in the 60s, I believe. And that's where most of the like books and different collections are held. And then there's the library edition or the dome. And you'll hear people refer to it a lot as the dome. The dome is where a lot of services are held. So if you ever come and need research help, the research desk is in the dome. Um, if you're going to check out a book, you would check it out in the dome. Uh, the writing, all the uh, tutoring centers are in the dome, different things like that. Um, the main building also has a lot of uh, study space. The fifth floor, you'll hear, you'll hear people talk about the fifth floor of the library a lot, and that's like a, a quiet floor, and a lot of people like to go there to study. Um, but aside from that, uh, you know, we have, like I said, we have a really large research collection, um, and that's because, uh, you know, as a student, you're going to be asked to use certain kinds of tools when you're doing certain kinds of projects and papers, um, and those tools can be anything from books, encyclopedias, um, articles, both digital and print, um, any kind of digital stuff. So these are all tools for you. Their information resources. Um, you'll often hear a lot of it talked about as either described as either academic or scholarly and peer reviewed, which is a different thing. But scholarly and academic tend to be, they all tend to mean the same thing when people uh, call something scholarly or academic. Um, and I'll touch more on different types of resources in a little bit. Um, another important tool, aside from like the physical building, the actual resources are the people in the library. So there's, like I said, there's a lot of academic support for you guys at the library um, with the writing center and the math and stats learning center. And then um, you have your librarians like me, um, and you also have subject librarians who are more, um, they're more experts in different types of uh, subjects. So basically, um, 
different librarians get assigned to different departments. So depending on your whatever your major is, there's probably a librarian who is considered like your subject specialist librarian. And they're kind of a good person to get to know and just like start uh, building a relationship and using that person as a resource to help you with any of your uh, research needs. Um, and also, even though we are digital right now, there are different events that are happening in the library uh, that are held virtually. And we can, I can show you guys on the uh, homepage, there's usually a news and events slider, and you can see what, what's going on um, digitally. So like I said, the librarians and library staff are here to help. There is chat reference 24-7. Um, so at any point, if you guys are up late working on your papers and you need some help finding something, we're here for you. You can also just send us an email or you, and you can make an appointment to, you know, have a virtual Zoom appointment with them for like an hour. Um, and so what's your assignment? Um, so your professor told me earlier in a previous email, you guys are looking at like issues of uh, like diversity training, racial diversity, and how it affects literacy education in different contexts, right? So like writing centers, different things like that. So that's kind of like the basic overarching topic that you guys are gonna be looking at for your, uh, for your projects. Um, and so then you guys have to divide into groups and you guys need to find at least three research articles and scholarly journals. And so that's kind of what I'll show you guys how to do on the website. Um, has anyone actually like met with their group already and picked their topic or like have a vague idea? Yeah, if someone wants to share their, um, like their whatever topic you guys decide, it doesn't have to be very specific. If you guys can share it in the chat, oops. Um, I can uh, uh, use that as my search when we get there. Just give me a second. Sorry about that. But it'll be good to give you guys a moment if you guys want to share your topic. Um, okay, so while, you, while someone shares their topic, you don't have to. Um, I can go into the different types of resources. So a lot of the time, books and articles are going to be the things that your professors ask you to use. And that is mostly because the authors for these books and articles have already done a lot of research. OK, they've done a lot of research and they've made um, they've taken the different evidence that they found and they have created an argument. You know, they've presented their idea. And when you're writing in college, um, a lot of the time you're inserting yourself into that conversation. You're creating a new, a slightly new piece, but you're participating in the scholarly conversation. And you're taking whatever everyone before you has written about, and you're creating a new piece of work. Um, but you could also do something like original research. Um, and usually to do that, you might use things that we call uh, primary resources. And that could really be anything from like artifacts and interviews, um, images. So there, there's a lot of things to consider if you guys end up liking to do, re liking to do research. Um, there's different things that you can use as evidence, right? Um, but what's important is that you always ask yourself, um, like, what is the goal of my paper? What is the goal of my project? And what's the type of information that I'm looking for? And whether whatever resource you find satisfies those main points. Um, and then just something for you guys to know, and like another reason to use the library, is that the, the library collection has been built up since its inception, since its uh, creation by all the librarians who have worked there. And like I said before, there are subject specialist librarians. So these are all people who might have had, um, you know, like have done undergrad in that subject. They might have a master's or a PhD in that subject. They might just know what, um, like what's really popular to use, what are really trustworthy things in that subject. And so, you know, the, these people are experts, we're all experts, and we've picked and choose the
for access to different like things like databases. So you guys have a strong research uh, collection to work with. Okay. Um, which brings me to something that I saw your professor addressed in the um, in the assignment description is uh, like, okay, so you found something, you, you decide to use, you know, you guys have to use articles. So you found an article. How do you determine its authoritativeness or its credibility? So authority is, is, is given. Okay, so like the, the, um, the type of example that I try to, that I like to use is, you know, if it, a new, there's a, a couple that they're going to be new parents, right? And, um, you know, they want to learn about different things that they can help to do, um, like how to stimulate, you know, different language, the development of different language receptors, or, you know, how to stimulate their vision to develop properly. You know, you, you could listen to your friends with kids. Like, would you, would you listen to your friends who have kids? Maybe not so much. You might prefer to, or you, you, <laughs> What you should do is maybe listen more to people who are experts in child development. However, if you are looking for information on like different ways to help put your kid down to sleep, in that case, you might consider your friends who have had kids more of an authority than people who have, um, than, than like people who are child development experts, okay? Authority is given, it's granted, and you place your trust in different people and different experts, okay? People, people are experts in different types of ways. Um, but the important thing is to then consider like, is this person considered an authority, a credible authority for what I need, for the type of information I need? And so some questions to always ask yourself is who is the author do they have any like skin in the game do they have like an agenda um what are their credentials right a child development expert someone who has done a phd or like my friends with kids um that's some different questions just some of the different questions that you should ask yourself. Also, where did you find the information slash how did you find the information? What type of journal would, you know, like look at the title of the journal. Where did you find it? Um, is it an open access journal? Is it something that you need to have credentials for? Um, have you seen this journal? Uh, have you seen articles be published in this journal multiple times, like different things like that might give something credibility. Um, and also looking at the content of the article. So specifically, if you do wanna determine if something is academic or scholarly, and sometimes some clues to determining if something is peer reviewed is looking, do they have a reference page? Are they presenting research? Um, are they citing, like, who are they citing for their, um, for their, like, pieces of evidence and different, just some of those uh, different elements um, to consider. Um, and then when it actually comes to doing research, some things to just keep in mind, you know, this is very general overview, um, and I'll kind of try to explain a little bit more when we actually do some of the searching on the website is uh, when you're thinking about your keywords that you want to search, keep track of them. Um, sometimes, and I'll show you again in a bit, uh, sometimes the, the um, website that you're using, it might save your searches. Um, sometimes you might do something, you might do a search and you're like, oh no, I don't really have enough time, but it looks like this has a lot of uh, results that are really helpful. And you close the tab and then it's like lost forever, right? So either write it down or um, if you have the option, log into your library account, which um, if you're using the library website, you can log into your library account and it'll save your searches. Um, another thing is use synonyms. Um, a lot of the times that people struggle with their searches is that you guys get like stuck, you guys get married to using certain words and try to think of different ways to express different ideas. Um, which brings me to, is there specialized language that you can try? You know, different subjects have different specialized language that you can use. Um, so for example, 
um, you know, if you're, you guys are talking about like um, diversity training is in the world of like trainings, um, is there like a specific language that they might use? Are there different ways to express diversity? Um, is, are there different ways that different um, like colleges, um, like do they actually use the phrase writing center or do, do different colleges call it different things? So just something to keep in mind. Um, and also when you select your keywords, use single words or short phrases because um, most databases, they're not like Google. You know, I know, um, I'm sure a lot of us have seen like on um, like movies or TV show, TV shows when like a parent is like, who is like the president of HBO? Like they type out the whole question on Google. That doesn't work on library databases. You have to be selective of your keywords. Um, and yeah, and so then I'll kind of um, show you guys a little bit more on the website. Um, but I guess another big thing is like, a lot of the time I get questions on the chat and someone's like, oh, I'm looking for the negative effects of blank on blank, right? A lot of the time, um, you including something like impact or negative or positive, like benefits, different things like that, um, that's not really what a paper is gonna have explicitly in their title. Um, if, it's, if it's a good research paper, it won't really be touting anything necessarily. It won't really be pushing anything. It'll be presenting uh, the research and then uh, like um, coming to the conclusion that like you can draw on. Um, and so then again, the la kind of the last thing I want to really instill in you guys is that research is a process. And right now that we do a practice search, you'll see that like it's going to take a little bit of playing around with our searches to find something that looks like it might be helpful. Um, you will have a plan and you will try it out and you will probably fail. Um, and that's totally normal. You know, it's, it's all about like re-strategizing your searches. Um, no research process is like perfect. Um, so try not to get frustrated, but also give yourself time to do your research, okay? And so with that, I will take us to the library website. Does anyone have any questions before I get into this? Let me look at this chat real quick. Okay, so we have tutoring non-native speakers. Let me write this down. Um, institutional racism and literacy education. These are great. Education, deculturalization. Okay, it doesn't look like any questions are coming up. Um, can English dialects. Education. Okay. So here is the website. Um, some of you have said that you guys have used this, and that's great. Um, I'm just going to touch on a couple things on the home page. Uh, you have your immediate like research chat box that pops up. This will keep popping up until you say no thanks. Um, but again, like this is sort of think of it as like a lifeline wherever you are on the website. If you get lost and you're like overwhelmed, um, you can always send us a chat and we'll try to help you guys out. Um, if you guys are using your phone or a tablet, you use the on a mobile device link because it'll help you um, use the chat and use the website because otherwise it'll like mess up and it'll take you somewhere else. Okay. Um, the COVID update box is here. Uh, so that's something good to keep in mind. It'll tell you when different services become available again. Um, but right now we are doing Domeside book pickup. 
And right now you can also go and sit in the outdoor study space, which I'll show you guys again later on while we're doing searches. Um, and also this is the news and events slider that I told you guys about where like, if there's anything going on virtually in the library, um, it'll be listed here, it'll be pop up there. Um, and so then we have our big old search all box here. Um, when you use this search all tab, it's going to search the whole website. So it's going to look at all of the blog posts or any of the pages that are on the website. Um, it'll give you uh, what is called or what we call like our bento search. So it'll divide everything up. Um, let me see. I'll show you guys. Visualization. Um, and so this might be a good way to start uh, if you just want to have a poke around. So it divides everything into little boxes. So one search is the library database. Um, and so then it'll divide it by journal articles, books, and whatnot. Um, but we always recommend people um, to start off using the OneSearch tab. Um, OneSearch is what would search all of the library resources that we have. Um, there are some that won't pop up, but it's a good place to start off um, doing your research because you'll kind of get an overview. And then afterwards, um, we usually recommend that people might try using um, the research guides, which I'll again touch on in a second. Um, so OneSearch is our database. You can kind of think of it, think of it a little bit like Google, just in just in this specific example. So you want to find a movie, right? And so you would search for the movie and to find out what, what the different streaming platforms are where you could watch it, right? And Google usually gives you a uh, watch options, this thing that's built in now. And it'll tell you the different streaming platforms that have it, right? It's all the same movie, but it's held in different places. And so OneSearch will sort of do the same thing. Um, if like if you have a specific book in mind um, or like a specific journal, it would show you like the result, but it it would be found in different places. And hopefully, when we do a practice search, it'll it'll I'll kind of be able to show you guys. Um, but it's all the same content, okay? It's just our little searching uh, tool. Um, and then we usually recommend people to use advanced search because the one box doesn't give you a lot of control. And I think a lot of people are getting confused um, and feel like they can't find any results. Um, but the advanced search is the way to go. It gives you two different boxes for your search terms and you can keep adding more. Now keep in mind that what as like the more search boxes that you add, the more search terms or phrases, the narrower your results are going to be because you're looking for something very specific. Um, and you can think of this as sort of like a math equation, um, like or like that slide that I showed you guys that had the little Venn, Venn diagram with the little circles. Um, the more lines that you add, imagine you're adding another circle. So it has to like, all these things have to overlap to find one little thing and you're narrowing down your results. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so these are your little search thingies. Um, and then you have this thing, which is and or or not. And that's a really good tool to, um, if you keep getting results that are maybe related to a different subject. So for example, I was doing a search for someone who was, um, I think an anthro, major and they were looking at decolonization, but I was getting a lot of things related to decolonization in biology, okay? So for example, you would be able to put not, and then there's a little thing that says subject and biology, okay? So it, it's kind of important to learn how to fiddle around with these just to get comfortable um, and learn how to use this, um, okay. So our practice search, finally. Um, let's try this one that was tutoring non-native speakers, okay? So this is great because I can show you um, 
So you can have tutor, right? The different forms that you can have the word or express the idea tutoring, tutor, tutoring, um, tutors, right? Um, if you add a little asterisk, it'll key, it'll search for that beginning part of the word and then any ending. So if you are looking for anything related to kids, right? You might have child, child's children, childhood, right? You don't want to add all those different words or like all those different forms of the word into a different field. So you can just have child and the little asterisk. So this is something good to just like use if you want to have a lot or like try to get as many results as you can. Um, and so then let's do non-native actually let's do non-native speaker um when you do have a search that or like a phrase put quotes around it because it'll keep it together and this way one search recognizes that there's a relationship there and it won't just search for like non-native and speaker separately okay and then we can search for english and we'll do search. Okay, so then here, like I said, here you can see this like little math equation, right? Tutor plus non-native speaker plus English. Um, and you have your results page. So once you kind of fiddle around with your keywords, the next thing that you can use are your filters over on the left-hand side. Um, so you guys will definitely have to use peer reviewed journal or like articles, right? So use the peer reviewed filter. Most databases will have a peer reviewed filter. So if you need that, make sure you, you, you know, select that and use it. Um, and here you could see it like we have 2,942 results. Um, just by selecting peer reviewed, we would limit to a thousand. And since we're looking for articles for now, we can select articles. You can also limit by publication date, which is helpful for those of you who are STEM people. Um, you know, sciences will always need the most recent um, information. So if you guys want to limit through that, um, but also when you're doing research, sometimes you might want to specifically focus on a specific time period. Um, Subject is the next really important thing. So again, like I said, you know, with that decolonization search that I was doing, the person was getting a lot of biology results. You, she would have been able to use the subject filter to limit to make sure that she would get anything related to like the humanities, social sciences, different things like that. And here you can see there's actually a lot of different specific filters that could be helpful for you guys. So English as a second language, second language learning, um, second language instruction, education and educational research might be a good thing to try. So I'm not going to pick any right now because I just want to see what limiting to uh, peer reviewed and articles are. And so I'll touch on a little bit what peer review is. So peer review is a process that um, some publications will go through. And it's just basically like a panel of peers. So other people who are considered experts in that field, right? And they'll review your, your paper. They'll like read it over. And they can, you know, tell you to like, make edits and then they'll publish it or they might be like you know what we don't we don't agree with the research methods um they they give you feedback um or they like they give you feedback about your actual research or you know about your writing or they might just straight up reject it okay um but it's this process that things go and it's basically just like a stamp of approval from peers and other experts in the in the field that say like this research is well done or like we think that this is well done and so we're gonna accept it to be published by our journal sometimes it could be um one time that it goes through that process sometimes there's like 
uh, it, it has to go through it two times. It, it's a really hard thing to get done. Like it, um, a lot of people get rejected. So um, it, it's not easy to get your stuff published in a peer reviewed journal. So that's kind of why professors really ask a lot of the time for people to use peer review because it's kind of, it's, it's to make sure that you're using appropriate academic scholarly information. Um, and so here we have our results that are peer reviewed and their articles. Um, a lot of these you'll see are marked and they'll, they say that they're peer reviewed um, and full text available. So you can just click through. Sometimes we'll actually have physical print ones, uh, which right now we can't have access, but it tends to be for like older journals that we might have. Um, and so whoever sent me the whole like uh, this topic, do, do any of these seem like, um, applicable to you? Or is anything catching your eye? Conversation, gestures, ESL, conversational tutoring. Um, think, oh, student interactions with a native speaker tutor and a non-native speaker tutor at an American writing center. That sounds like something, that sounds very specific, like something that whoever sent me that topic might, it might be helpful, right? Um, so let's click on it. Ooh. Okay. So whenever you wanna access something, you can always just click on whatever link is available. And then a little box should load here. And you always got to give it a minute to load. And so here you can see, like Google did, it gave me the different places that this article is available in, okay? Sometimes if one link doesn't work, you can click on another link and see if it'll take you that way. Um, but you would click on it. And whenever you're trying to access anything online from the database or from the library, you have to log in with your SDSU ID to be able to access anything, okay? And that's, again, like we pay a lot of money and you, like you guys contribute to paying for access to a lot of these resources, okay? Um, and so some things to kind of look for when you're looking at resources um, is, let's see, not sure if JSTOR has this. So you can, if you find something and you don't have time, you could always email it to yourself. Um, let's see, thumbnails, references. So here this person has their references. The reference page is a really helpful place. So let's say, or to look at. So let's say you're struggling a bit to find things. You find one article and you're like, oh my gosh, like this person has a lot of really good stuff. Always look at the reference page to see if that, um, if there's anything that they're citing that you might want to look for, okay? The, re the reference page is really helpful when you're kind of looking for more information about things. And then it's kind of like a little, a little network that you're going through, you know, you could find something in this article that they cited and then like see who the other people that they cited are and just like, find things that way. Um, and so there's also a little citation thing here. Um, most, I was looking for this on JSTOR, but I guess I, JSTOR doesn't have it. Um, but a lot of databases will have a little citation tool which you guys are making a, an annotated bibliography, I think. So this might be helpful for you, for you to use, but always double check the citation. Um, and I'll show you guys in a little bit where you can check that or like some tools. Um, and yeah, and so again, you can email it to each other if you, since you guys are working in groups. Um, let's see, let me look at it on Gale. So like something I kind of want to clarify, some people sometimes will be like, oh, I found this on EBSCO. Oh, I found this on Gale. Oh, I found this on ProQuest. 
Um, it's kind of basically just the interface. Gail, EBSCO, um, they're kind of just like hosts, right? Um, different databases have specific names that, you know, if you guys want our, our help to try to help you find something and you found it before using the library, um, try to keep track of what the actual database name is because they're just different interfaces, again, that just have the same the same content and it's just presented to you differently, right? So like this one has the whole article on one page versus, ooh, versus um, this one has the article by each page. So it's just different, hosted differently. Um, and again, here you can email it, right? Download it. Um, let's see, does this have a citation thing? You could do view all related articles if you find something that's really helpful. That's always a good way to find more. Um, and then there's a little site thing right here. Any questions about articles? Okay, I'm not hearing anybody. So let's see. So let's say you wanted um, some, so you wanted to look at a book, okay? You could use the book filter. Um, this one's available online. This one's available in the library, okay? Um, so what you could do is, and this is when it's helpful to be signed in, you sign into your account when you wanna place a request. So for those of you guys who are near campus and can go to campus right now, um, you can put in requests through the library website and in about a week, they'll notify you that it's ready to pick up. And so here you can say, see it says place a hold on this item to request it. Um, it takes about a week and then you guys can go. Yes, um, last week I had someone ask me if you need special permission to go to campus right now. You don't. Um, I think the security is just making sure that everyone's wearing face masks and observing social distancing. So keep that in mind. Um, if you guys want special um, or like basic background information, you can use, and like I said, encyclopedias. Encyclopedias have basic background information. Um, if you're looking for things like that, it might be listed as a reference entry. So over here under filters, you can search for that. Um, and I know you guys can use different kinds of resources for the other um, resources that you need to find. You can also search newspaper articles. So your reference entries will have um, basic it's like basic non-changing information. Um, so like here you have like handbooks and applied linguistics, um, cultivating diverse online classrooms through effective instructional design, different things like that, okay? Is there anything you guys want me to touch on specifically on OneSearch? Like any issues that you guys have had before um, here, like little thumbtacks once I, once you're logged in. So up here you can see I'm logged in. You can save something to your account. You can save the whole search as well. And then you can, like I said earlier, you can look at your search history. So I probably should have made sure that I was logged in right at the beginning so that it saved all my searches. Okay. If there are no questions about OneSearch, I'll show you guys the um, research guides. So we really encourage people to use these because um, again, they're subject specific. 
if you go to college, guides by college or discipline. So you might have to, you could maybe use, look at databases that are related to education. So these are all basically, think of these as not really a shortcut, but just like a, a, a and not even really a cheat sheet, but it's just something helpful for your specific, um, for your sp for your specific subject, right? So one search searches, it's multidisciplinary. If you want to look at the databases at um, someone who is uh, like psychology, who has who's studying psychology, might use. Um, the, this is these are the types of guides to you look at. Um, all of the subject librarians have pulled like the really popular, really helpful things that are related to these subjects and they've put them all in one place so you don't have to go digging. Okay, so you guys um, might look into edu at the education research guide um, and here under articles, you might try to look into um, maybe ERIC. ERIC is the US Department of Education uh, database. Um, or education full text. And again, this is just like trying to toy with things. See, Eric looks totally different. It looks like Google. Um, if you do advanced search. Oh, that's just tips. Um, let's see. Let's try. Let's see if it recognizes this tutor. On native speaker English. Mm -hmm. So this should probably give you, oh, okay, see here. So reducing implicit bias toward non native speakers of English. So there's different, um, you know, if you again, if you're getting results that are related to a different subject using OneSearch, going to subject specific ones will help narrow it down. But again, this is also where you might want to um, think about the different um, subject related or subject specific language that they might use uh, in the field of education. And that's where it's kind of really important to learn that. Um, and again, always, always use filters. So your keywords and your filters are very important for you guys to always try to use when you're looking for resources. Um, also in this research guide list, there is, uh, let's see, by topic, there's a how to cite your sources. So if you guys need help um, creating citations, there's a guide here to help you guys how to do that. If you're, again, if you're looking for news or newspaper articles, there's a link for the different news and newspaper databases. Those are really popular as well. Um, any questions about these? There's also like a class specific. So some of you guys might have class, any of these classes that require a lot of uh, research and they've asked, the professors have asked the librarians to make uh, guides for your classes. So very important tool to find. You could always just get to it on the homepage and they're called research guides. <clears throat> any questions? Let's see, I saw have chats. Okay. Does it handle citations automatically? Well, like I said, um, it, it'll create it. So it's basically like whatever information is given, like have any of you, well, <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys have ever tried to like import a CD or like a burn CD and like you have no tracks. Um, they're just like track numbers and then you have to like input the information. That's kind of what uh, a lot of these citation things do is they just like take whatever information is available, however it's presented and plug it in, in the different fields. And sometimes it may or may not be correct. And so you have to like restructure it sometimes. Um, okay, so then if you guys need help with tutoring, um, especially with writing, um, 
The Writing Center and the Math and Stats Learning Center are currently online and taking appointments. So if you guys need help with that, while you guys are working, you know, if you guys need help um, from the Writing Center, there's that. Um, and then there is, like I said, you guys can go outside and study. Um, let's see, if you guys go to the COVID webs, the COVID page, it'll say that you can use the Love Library patio to use the Wi-Fi. And if you click on there, it'll have a map and you can see outdoor study spaces is selected. And these are all the different places that you can study on campus right now. Um, just know that they are, it's available to you guys to use um, from sunrise to sundown because they're not like providing any lighting at night. Um, and also in terms of outlets. So if you guys wanna be out there for a really long time, I'm not sure that there are any outlets available, like any extension cords. So just keep that in mind um, if you decide to go to campus to study. Uh, oh, and then also if you need it, um, there's printing available in the uh, Pride Center, I think also. So if you guys need printing, um, yeah. So any questions? I think that's about everything. Um, again, we're here for you 24 seven. So if you guys need any help or want a librarian to review anything that I talked to you guys about, there's a live chat that you guys can always just check in. So yeah, it's a lot, um, it's okay, you know, Using the library and using the library website, it's a skill. It's not like, oh, once you, like, I, it's not like we expect you guys to be completely fluent in doing research after this, okay? So it's a skill and it's something that even as librarians, like we're still learning how to do research, you know? So it's just something to kind of get comfortable with and just learning the different tips and tricks to help you guys out, yeah. Marta provided some really great trips, tips and tricks. Yeah, these are things that I had to figure out on my own. And um, she has shared them with you. Play around with them. Like she said, it's a skill that you develop and master over time. And so, you know, like play around with it. You're gonna be doing a lot of research. Try the things she suggested and you will discover additional tips and tricks too. Thank you so much, Erica. That was really great. Yeah, I'm sorry to overwhelm people on a Monday, but you know, just, just let it all marinate, reach out if you guys need help and good luck to everyone. And I hope everyone stays healthy. Okay. Okay. So, bye. <laughs> all right, we're dismissed. Um, I'll stick around for a little bit if you have questions, otherwise, you can be on your way. Um, did we decide when the uh, 